Hello again, brothers and sisters. Well, it's still Tuesday night. Uh, it's now 8, 10, 8, 12. Gosh, yeah, 8, 12 p.m. I'm going to get this one up, and then I'm going to get busy. Uh, I got to want to do some singing and praying. Okay, this is another dream by Fantasy Final, and this came to me two weeks ago in my messages that I have now figured out how to get to. Okay. All right. Uh, this one uh, sounds a little weird, but with all the detail, um, you know how dreams can be. They're not always like we think they ought to be. So just think about it, and if you think you have a interpretation, feel free to leave a comment. Okay. Hi, Jeannie. I wanted to share with you another dream. Now, before anyone says I'm going crazy, let me say that I never dream dreams in cartoon form. This was something weird, even for me, but it was the way it was shown. No, I did not watch this out of a movie, and no, I did not have this stored up on my mind. Okay, the dream started off with a squirrel, and he was sat upon a bench, sad and alone. Moments after, a girl squirrel was placed before him. The two were now a pair. That same day, the boy drifted off to sleep, and the girl wandered off. She was being followed, and she knew it. She ran as fast as she could and managed to escape. When she made it back to the boy, I noticed how she gestured with her hands in anger. Her mouth did not move, but through her gesturing hands, I knew what she was saying. Why didn't you come for me? she shouted. Broken and angered, she ran off. He followed, trying to reach her, but suddenly bumped into another female squirrel and stumbled to the ground. She was not like him. She was pure white as the snow and had a glowing brightness to her. As he got up, he shook his head, looked around, but saw nothing. When he looked down, a female squirrel similar to him was curled up on the ground. She was almost bald. He took her hand, and the two began to run around bumping into sheep that were dirty. One after another, a pile was made. The squirrels then placed something beneath the pile held on, and were now flung up into the air. As my eyes followed, I then saw how it fell, it fell amongst a stable of starving wolves. The wolves, craving and hunger, ran over and began to devour them. Two sheep managed to run towards the gate, but it was closed. I saw how one of the sheep desperately tried to climb out and open it, but the one beside him said it was too late. This is where we belong. No, we can still make it. We just have to try, said the desperate one. His desire to open that gate was immense. My image was now placed behind them. I remembered extending my hands out and seeing them as I was seeing it all. Cartoon-like, I pulled my hands down and looked at the desperate sheep. I saw how his wool was all dirty 
his legs and arms peeled and scraped, his skin so dried it cracked with just one movement. Extending my hands out to look at them once more, I then began to feel this sheep's pain. I felt the sores, the cracking of its skin, the burning sensation. If it wept, if it trembled even a little, I felt it. I looked at this sheep yet again and saw how it wept. Tears flowing down in great amounts. I was now crying for him. I wanted to stop its tears, or at least in some way help. So I reached in and began to squeeze the tears from its wool. Although I tried and tried, I could not stop it. It was too great. His pain was too great, and there was nothing I could do. Let's see, I lost my place. Okay. There was nothing I could do. I was now pulled up into the sky and was shown from a top view. I saw the wolves eating. I saw the gate and the sheep, but also saw its tears as it poured out like a never-ending stream. That image was now gone, and I was now standing on a rooftop, and beside me was another sheep, only he was different from the rest. He had brown wool, light brown skin, and was tall. I recall looking at him and, and asking, Aren't you going to fight back? He responded, I cannot. It is in their nature to do so. It was written. I could see wolves running, roaming the area, seeking things to devour. I followed this sheep as he climbed from one roof to another and then jumped over a wall. I told him to wait. He said, we must save as much as we can. Hurry. The time is almost near. And then I woke up. Okay. I got the impression right off that that sheep the light brown one on the roof might have represented Jesus, but I don't know. Like I said, I don't have the gift of dream interpretation. So if some of you do and you listen to this, just leave a comment and tell us all what you think. And if you want to just say, well, I have an idea of what it might mean, you can say that and then tell us what you think. That'd be okay. All right. Well, I love you all. I plead the blood of Jesus over this video and the internet connection and over each and every one of you as well. All right. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye for now.